Hey everyone, Sean here, and welcome to a very special video. I am very excited to bring you some recent findings from an algorithm that I made to finally answer the question, when starting a Wordle puzzle, what is the mathematically optimal first guess? I have found the method for measuring each word's effectiveness as a guess and present in this video the best five and worst five words to use. Uh, a note on this, this doesn't mean that you're playing the game wrong if you're not using these words. Uh, in fact, the word that I use is not even on the top five list. Uh, I will try to make this short. My previous attempt at this video was 22 minutes long and incredibly boring. Uh, before we get into it, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. So, in searching the internet for words that people use, I found this list. I thought this is a really good start to see what people are, are currently thinking as to what could be a great first guess. And you see a lot of similarities if you look around these words. Uh, there are no particular orders. So the colors mean nothing. They're just there to uh, divide it up. So what you see a lot of is what I call the um, Wheel of Fortune words, uh, letters. R-S-T-L-N-E. Most of these words have... Um, an E and an A. Most of these words have an S. A lot of them have an R. Uh, it seems to be sort of where a lot of the uh, focus uh, remains on those letters, uh, especially that E, A, and S. Um, a lot of these have multiple vowels. You see uh, plenty of them have three vowels um, in them, and most of them have unique vowels. They're not repeating the same vowels over and over again. Uh, my particular favorite word to use here right in the middle, Aegis. So before looking at the analysis of the words in Wordle, uh, I want to introduce a quick concept. Imagine someone tells you they're thinking of a random number between one and a thousand. Your goal is to figure out what that number is using as few questions as possible. Your questions may only have two answers. So yes or no, true or false, even or odd, um, no matter what you ask, there can only be two answers, and all of the numbers have to fall into uh, one of those two answers. What you're actually doing is contriving questions that divide your data into two categories. Each time you ask a question, you divide the remaining options into two categories. The answer tells you in which category the target number falls. From there, you can ask another question to divide that category into a smaller category and smaller category until you've narrowed it down to the one option that remains. What's important here is to try and make sure that each time you ask a question, the categories that you define by the question should be the same size. Dividing the data such that the two categories are not equal will cause you, on average, to require more questions to narrow down your search before you have properly deduced the number. So how does this apply to a word game? The first step is to realize the underlying mechanics of the game are actually very similar to what we just described with guessing the number. Each time you guess a word, you are essentially dividing all of the dictionary into different categories. Uh, based on the results that are that come out of the response from the, the uh, program. There are 243 possible responses when you guess a word. Each time you guess, the word you choose divides all of the over 12,000 five-letter words in the dictionary into each of these 243 categories. When the game gives you its actual response, it's telling you which of these 243 categories contains the answer you're looking for. Just like the previous example, dividing the options as evenly as possible into these 243 categories is the most efficient method, which means that you can solve the wordle in less guesses on average. This is how we turn the responses that the game gives us into a number format so that we can divide the dictionary into these 243 categories. In, the, in this visual, we are testing the word guess. The actual answer is truss. As we test the two words, we see that the response from truss can be coded to the number 35 using powers of 3. The actual math here is not super important, only that there is a unique number that we can assign to every color combination that the puzzle would give us back. 
As long as we go through this process, we don't need to go keep track of which words end up in each category, just how many words end up in those categories. Again, this is getting a bit technical, and it's not super important to keep track of exactly how this works. After comparing that one word to the entire dictionary of five-letter words, we discover what these 243 categories look like. I've created a histogram here as representation of this concept, where the heights of the bars represents how many words would fall into each category. In this option, you'll see that there's a lot of variation between the categories. If this was a real example, uh, for this particular word, we see this a lot of variation would mean that this would not be a good word to start with. If your data looked more like this, however, this word would be a much better word than our previous example. We can measure how even the distribution is over these categories by measuring the standard deviation of the number of words in each of these categories. A lower standard deviation is better. So without further ado, it turns out the best first guess in a Wordle puzzle is the word Larry's. Uh, Larry's is uh, from ancient Rome. Uh, Larry's are sort of minor deities that oversaw a very small domain, uh, like uh, one's home or a neighborhood or a crossroads. Uh, they played a very important role in the um, ancient Roman life. Uh, and more importantly, it is the best guess that you can do uh, statistically to narrow down a Wordle puzzle. Uh, looking at these best options, you can see a lot of similarities here. Number one, they all end in ES. Um, I think that's really important because that shows uh, not only the third person singular conjugation of a lot of verbs, but also the pluralization uh, of a lot of nouns end in uh, S or ES. Uh, you also see that all of these include uh, R and A, mostly the A falls in the second position. Uh, aside from the, the vowels, you have uh, R, S, T, and L, and N. So those Wheel of Fortune letters certainly came in handy. The standard deviation here shows that these letters, or these first guesses are all fairly close, uh, especially when compared to some of these worst uh, first guesses. Now let's talk about the worst ones, because these are definitely a lot of fun. Uh, number one, the worst guess that you can possibly start with in Wordle is the word fluffy. Now fluffy means either fluffy and light, or an ancient, uh, uh, not ancient, a uh, Scottish word meaning uh, fussy or um, easily offended. Um, these these words are definitely a grab bag of awful combinations of uh, more, the more rare letters in the English language. Um, Imix, I think, looks like a Roman numeral. It's actually quite close to the Roman numeral for uh, 2009, I believe. Um, and you can see the standard deviation here is five times what the uh, best guess is. Going back to the words that we mentioned earlier, the ones that were proposed by uh, the public, um, by uh, other people who had created algorithms to propose uh, some of their favorite uh, words, the, their statistical best using their heuristics, um, and then ones pulled from uh, Reddit of people's uh, favorite words to use, uh, we can actually see that in general, the, the intuitive um, words chosen by uh, human nature tends to be fairly good. I mean, we can see here that most of these are over 95%. Um, a lot of 99%, 98% uh, the obvious outliers here. Uh, reset um, only has one vowel in it that it's testing, so 77% for that. Still pretty good. Uh, train does not have an S, so that's suffering. Um, sui tends to be an Looks like an interesting one to be. I don't know that I would necessarily choose that one as my first guess, but 82% um, is still pretty good. Um, and how's my favorite one doing right there in the middle? Get again, Aegis at 98%. So not, not all that bad. Uh, so now for the real question, will I abandon my precious 
Aegis that has served me so well for the mathematically superior Larry's? No. I know it sounds weird for me to dive this deep into an analysis of all these words to come up with the best possible outcome and then not use it, but I actually have some deeper opinions on this. First, I play this game for fun. Aegis is the word that I came up with. That's what my brain power was able to produce. I can certainly extrapolate my algorithm to solve the entire puzzle optimally, but then it just wouldn't be a game anymore. So for now, I will continue to use Aegis. I may mix it up from time to time just for fun, but I'm probably not going to use Larry's except maybe on occasion. Uh, second, and I think more importantly, is that the strategy that I use to find uh, the optimal word is not the algorithm that I personally use when solving a puzzle. Human minds simply do not function the same way that computers do. If a computer wants to come up with a five-letter word that starts with A and ends with Y, the computer would have a full dictionary loaded and iterate through every word one by one, testing it against those criteria. If someone asks me to come up with a five-letter word that starts with A and ends with Y, I just start randomly listing words like alley, artsy, and array. I think that most people's instinct to include more vowels as their opening word is helpful, not because it's optimal to gain the most information from the game's feedback like Larry's would, but because structuring the word in terms of its vowels does a few different things for the human brain. A computer doesn't actually speak the language of the game, so it doesn't understand that a word beginning with O would probably have a sound like O or A to begin with. That's where the human brain and the computer differ. Also, understanding that there's an A in the first position and an E in the fourth position tells me that the word probably has two syllables. Both of these are information that doesn't help a computer solve the problem, but can be very helpful to get a human mind to start thinking of the right criteria on how a word sounds to allow them to come up with an answer. That's all I got for you. Thank you so much for all of the support you've shown me online. If you watched through to this point, let me know in the comments what your favorite word is that you use to start your Wordle puzzles, and if you're thinking of using the word Larry's. As always, remember to like and subscribe. It really does help out. And if you know anyone who enjoys word puzzles or unnecessary and long, complex statistical analysis of fairly simple games, please share, th share this with them as well. Otherwise, I'll continue to do my daily videos on YouTube where I solve the day's Wordle. If you want to try it out for yourself, please give it a shot before you watch the day's video. You can find the game at powerlanguage.co.uk slash wordle. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.